All right, this time we're gonna start the interview like this. Opening a beer. And uh, again, I'm deliberately off camera because that's how we roll. But you know the face in front of the camera, that's um, <laughs> Rupert Guinness and he's looking weathered and thin and trim and, 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 and actually really quite um, radiant for a bloke who's ridden around a, a motor racing circuit for 24 hours. <laughs> Crazy stuff, isn't it, when you think about it? But it's probably a good thing I didn't think about it too much. It's really quite impressive to think what you've undertaken. So it's this is the Revolve 24. It was the inaugural yeah. event. Rupert Guinness was, well, he became an ambassador by default because he wanted <laughs> to test himself. You were one of the solo competitors. Yep. Lots of people out there? Look, um, it, was, it, was a, <clears throat> it was lots of people because uh, there was a lot of support crews as well for, for these uh, various teams. There was, uh, from the solo, solo entrance i think there was like 20 oh no i think it was 34 and then um from the teams all up there was about 200 people uh who, was, who were taking part in it and uh it was probably a good number to start with because <clears throat> like a lot of events um you know a lot of events that you, you on the first time you see where things can be done better but you know uh, that's not i'm not criticizing the event it was a, it was a great startup event um great atmosphere and uh, it was a very interesting course. It's nice to uh, always be involved in something that's the first. Uh, and the course at Tail and Bend, um, called The Bend, it's a uh, uh, brand new motor racing circuit. And um, it was interesting to ride on some beautiful roads. You know, the actual, you know, the fresh bitumen on a, on a car racing circuit was beautiful. So uh, there was a lot of, uh, there's some really good positive vibes out there. Cool. So let's go through the numbers. You covered how much? We covered. Territory. I did uh, five hundred and eighty-six point five kilometres. Um, I did one hundred and seventy-two. Uh, one hundred and seventy-two laps. I did of the circuit. The circuit was actually shortened to three point four. Mm -hmm. I think it was. There was some conjecture as to how long the circuit was. It was shortened um, because of the conditions uh, on the day, because the conditions were horrendously windy and where the motor racing circuit is at the moment um, all the land in between the various uh, switchbacks and everything like that not switchbacks the corners and bends uh, it's just sand so it was like the tour of qatar there for you know the first six or eight hours because it was just blowing across across and the sand was just right straight in your face and on your on your legs and it was actually thicker than the sand it was almost well, there weren't stones, but it was just uh, just really hard. And it was, um, I remember when I covered the Tour of Qatar, you know, the riders used to talk about that, because I was in the press car then, and uh, the riders used to talk about how the, the, the sand stung. And um, that, was, that was a unique experience for me, or first up experience to, to, to ride into those conditions. So you did six, a six hour block without stopping. And, yeah, yeah. And, oh, and you, you can make your own rules, couldn't you? You could choose what you wanted to. You could mm. ride 15 minutes yeah. and then sit in the pits for a while if you did. Yeah, you, you could ride half an hour and just uh, sit there all for the rest of the 23 and a half hours if you want. You know, so it's all you self-regulate how you, how you want to you know, uh, split up your, your race. Right. Um, and you do that. You had a little bit of a plan to start with, but like all plans, they change depending on the conditions and how you're feeling. Right. Would you do it again? Look, uh, this time, 24 hours ago, um, I was probably saying no, but <laughs> these things start to creep in because you start to think, how could I do something a bit better? What would I do next time? It's just an, human nature, isn't it? I think for a lot of times to think, you know, you do something for the first time and then you think, well, if I had done that, perhaps I could have done this and or could have been more efficient with this. And uh, so I've already starting to think of ways I could have done it better. But I was very happy with the, with the first up, um, a first up ride uh, on an event like that. You know, it's different than, than the Indian Pacific wheel race. Um, has different sort of challenges in a way, but it still comes down to it. It's a very mental, a real mental game as much as physical. And I guess that's um, one of the things cycling does is that it allows, it entertains the idea of um, overcoming challenges. Mm -hmm. And um, and it's, it's how you adapt to that challenge that, you know, shows your weakness or strengths or, mm. or your abilities. Yeah, your abilities and also your ability to, to learn. Mm. 
I mean, we always say it's never too late to learn. We're always learning about stuff in life. And, and what I'm really enjoying with this, say, ultra endurance riding, and by no means am I, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, a, uh, I'm a newbie into this ultra endurance riding, I'm, but there's so much to learn. And so there's no such thing as a failure in, in this type of riding. It's just, it's an experience that you learn from and you just build on the platforms. And it's a lot of what helped me uh, in re resolve, uh, re resolve uh, Revolve 24 um, uh, was probably my experience at the Indy Pack, even though they're different races, but it's ostensibly it is still ultra endurance racing. And um, I was very happy to achieve what I achieved, particularly pretty soon after my um, hernia operation. Yeah, so exactly. good on the doctor. He obviously did a good <laughs> job. <laughs> On that, it sort of allows me to ask a question, if I may. How old are you? 55, be 56 uh, in March. Okay. I, I met you when around about the time that you enjoyed doing Ironman. Yeah. Or you were doing Ironman triathlons. Mm. And you also did a Zoffingen duathlon. Yeah. And you were a yeah. lot younger then. Yeah. I'm curious, you know, like at 55, you're pushing your body to a pretty extreme limit. Yeah. How do you think you would have fared in your 32-year-old self uh, in good, the challenge like for Revolve 24? Good question. Uh, it's the old thing, like if I knew then what I know now, I think I'd do pretty well, to be honest. You know, if I knew, but you know, have that luxury, do we, to be able to throw the clock back. But uh, what, I, what I do love is, is, again, the chance that there are opportunities to... I mean, this is not me trying to, you know, relive some missed opportunity in elite sport or anything. These events are not about that. It's, it's, for me, it's, it's about um, just continual self-discovery of, of what you've got in you with what you've got. I've got 55, nearly 56 years. I've got, um, you know, I'm someone who does put weight on quite easily. I'm someone who you know, likes a glass of wine or two, or too many. Uh, but I, th I think in the overall pattern is to having some balance and I think we spoke about this before, Rob, about the love of cycling, and this also reattaches myself to why I love cycling, mm. because I, I, we all love to ride a bike. Um, I love challenges to find the best out of myself, and um, and it gets you out of the uh, you know we all love professional bike racing, but there are, there are times when you sort of get pretty drained by the the cycle of the uh, political political side of the sport and it seems just to be continuing all the time mm. so this is kind of also an escape from that to you know re-strengthen or reattach to or remind myself why I do love the sport yeah nice. so because so, uh, there's a lot of reasons to say no and when, when you do see the negative reasons about it it can actually really drain take you away and almost make you cynical and uh, cycling is too good a sport to be cynical about Sure, I can understand why people would be cynical about professional racing because of the political environment and all the other issues that continue to. Yeah, you leave your, yeah, my head shaking. But yeah. make a decision, make a through decision. me, make, please. Please, yeah, you know, exactly. let us move forward. Yes, you know, and 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 so this is a way to go. You know what? It's not just about the professional side. It's not about the UCI. It's not about cycling in Australia. It's not. Mm. It's about just bloody getting on a bike and riding it. And you can test yourself. You don't, you know, you have to have a license to to go in some events. But you know, um, there's no politics in those 24 hours at the bend. There's no politics in those five and a half thousand kilometres of Indy Pack. Mm. There's no politics when you want to go gravel riding in the countryside. Mm. It's just riding a bike in the in the in the freedom of uh, of the natural environment that we're blessed with, mm. and yet we're continually destroying. You know. Anyway, I'm getting deep and meaningful about that. But that's what I really get off this sort of stuff, so. After every two hours, I'd swing through the pit area to do my, um, i just change my water bottles, my drink bottles. Right. That was just like a quick sort of change. Not like Formula One. No. You know, 3.2 seconds or two points. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get any flat tyres? Uh, no, no, I didn't. No flat tyres. No yeah, the, the only mechanical problem I had wasn't mechanical problem. It was you know, from because of all the, um, the the sand just getting into yeah. the into the gears and guts of the bike, and it was just like grinding away. After, and fortunately, um, I had a support crew of uh, 
uh, there was Nicola Rackness, who was my personal trainer back in uh, Australia, and she, uh, in Sydney, and she did a superb job in arranging all the food and, and, and the pit area that I've got, and, and she, she fought for our space, you know? Yeah. And uh, when there was a lot of other people around. And then uh, a, a local guy here in Adelaide called Bill Dragnus, a, a bike mechanic. Okay. He did a superb job, and he was on, the, on you know, with the, with, and he bought his bike rack and everything, yeah. his bike uh, stand. And he was straight on to all any bike issues I had. Uh, he was there, and he managed to you know clear, clean all that out for me. So that was superb. But it was the event was great. I've got to talk about it. Tim Decker. I heard about that. Absolutely phenomenal performance. Yeah. I heard he had to be carried onto the podium. Am I correct? I missed it when he went because I was, had my back turned. He went to the podium. I was, but I saw him. He had to be helped off the podium. And, uh, and he was helped to a chair, but he, he wrote just you know he did write a superb race. He he uh, he managed to get onto the right groups at the right time. You know he because there was team um, there was uh, team events as well. So the team riders would come on. Mm. They're obviously going at a pretty high pace, and and, and uh, you sort of slip into the groups with the team riders. I tried to do that, but I figured that was my first plan. But I figured after the first half hour. I go to plan B, which was I'm going to be on my own for most of this. So, uh, so you didn't try and jump in pace line? I tried, I tried. But then I, f I found that the pace for me for 24 hours, because there was a very small group. It wasn't like there was a big bunch or anything, because it started like a Le Mans start where someone holds your bike yeah. and you've got to run to your bike. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, um, anyway, it was all. But Tim rode a superb race, you know. He was. Uh, he was. Uh, he certainly has some mark on his uh, on his riders who he's coaching. Do you think that should be done in conjunction with the festival of cycling of the Tour Down Under, or should it be maybe a week earlier, or what, what's? No, I think it. I think it fits in well mm -hmm. because because there's a lot of people who um, who will come down for it. Mm -hmm. Like uh, you come down for it, you could do. The uh, Revolve 24. Here we are on this weekend. And then you go to the Crit. Like I went to the, I managed to make it to the Crit. Criterium, the People's Choice Criterium. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I just went as a spectator. Yeah. And then um, you could do that, and then see the Criterium, and then now you've got the Tour Down Under starting. You could get some great riding in. You start, you 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 finish. You know, you get in one day you get a good week's training load to talk about. Oh, I've had a 500 plus training week already. And you just start, you start from set your training week from Saturday. Yeah. So by the end of the end of one week, you could have over a thousand kilometers. Done. Bragging rights. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I won't no. be doing a thousand kilometers though. No. no. No, no, but seriously, I think it can, it just gives, it just widens that window. Okay, it costs money though. That's the other thing, you know. I mean, you know, the, 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 the money that it costs to come and spend 12 days for, for a family or an individual, that adds up. Did you weigh yourself in your ways before and weigh yourself after? And you got any other data like that? Have you got your average <coughs> speed at least? Average wattage? Anything like that? No, because my, my Garmin ran out twice because it only lasts 10 hours. So you've got to recharge it. Oh. So you've got to ride on without your Garmin. So that's, that's one of the... That was one of the... Uh, Maybe it was my mistake, but the Garmin does not going to last 24 hours that I know without having to recharge it. You so need one of those little porter packs. You... I should have taken one of those. See, all these little things, because they actually do mean something, because those, uh, cause then you spend the next... I, I said, well, OK, I gave Bill my Garmin to recharge, and I said, I'll just count the next laps. You quickly forget. Well, was that three laps? And then you forget the lap count, and then that gives you a little. It's a little thing, but if after ten or twelve hours of riding on your own, um, you know those little things become frustrating things, and you yeah. think about it more, and then you confuse yourself even more. Yeah. You live only a couple of, like, let's say, a kilometer and a half or two kilometers from Centennial Park in Sydney, which is a, mm -hmm. a place where you can ride without too much fear of traffic. Yeah. You've ridden around there probably 15 million times. Yep. Did you find that the circuit at the bend sort of <laughs> gave you a little bit more variety than that loop around Grand Drive? <laughs> yeah, that one. Yeah, that one. And then this one. <clears throat> 
So and it, that, was, it was kind of, it had lots of no, uh, curves and turns and twists. And yep, yep. And, and rest assured, everyone says it's flat. Mm. There are little rises. Okay. Which become, in the, in the last rises, they become like this. Like the last two laps. <laughs> I, was have, I was out of the saddle and just going, like I was climbing a hill. And then, if I can, just a funny anecdote. Uh, with two laps to go, someone came out and they said, Mike Tomolaris was there, you know, in, in a team event, and his team won a team event, and um, and uh, and this guy came out and said, uh, "Oh, Rupert, Tomo was worried about you. He he said he asked me to come out and uh, help you, you know, give you a bit of a um, a wheel to get through because you're allowed to slip, you know, obviously you're allowed to slip stream." I said, "Okay, thanks." And then I was having trouble holding his wheel. He said, "Just tell me how, how slow to go." I said. I couldn't even keep up with this guy. I was saying, I can't tell you how much slower to go because I'm just getting slower. And then, then Tomo appeared. He rode with me for the last lap. Okay. And uh, he was really good because um, I was abs- absolutely... Uh, the tank was so empty. It was so empty, Rob. I hadn't been like that. Um, you know, uh, oh, there was one night on Indy Pack I was like that. I was right. empty, but this was a different sort of emptiness. And uh, Tomo was there just talking all positive things. <laughs> you know, he was talking so much positive stuff, but it got, because it distracted me off, off the pain I was having. But anyway, it was about the hill. Mm. So I'm coming up and I said, oh, this hill's coming up, mate. I'm, I'm going to be so slow up this hill. And it's not technically a hill, but every <laughs> lap, after 172 times, yeah. that rise does become like that. Mm. Mm. And that's phenomenal. I think it's you know amazing how because you hear those stories, you think mm. that can't be true. Yeah, yeah. But it is. It certainly is. This is what happens with you and me. We, we we know each other's stories a little bit, so I can now sort of cast my mind back to other challenges you've mm-hmm. undertaken. And you told me one time, maybe when you were having a glass of rosé and I was having a beer, that about your um, Sydney to Hobart experience mm-hmm. and you basically, from my understanding, you didn't do a, a wee for 24 hours and by the time you <laughs> got to Hobart, there was, there was some story about that. Did, yeah. Did, 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 and, and it just makes me think about the challenges if you, you've gone through. Like, you're supposed to be just a reporter. You were just, you get amongst <laughs> it. Yeah. Well, how do you compare 24, Rowan Hall's 24 with Sydney to Hobart, I guess is my question. Yeah, it's it, that's a good question because City to Hobart, I did that twice, City to Hobart. It's probably done a lot of things I do twice. It's kind of interesting. I just, you know, and then because um, um, even uh, like with Ironmans, I've done 10 Ironmans, but I've often done the locations have been twice. So it's, I guess it's going that sort of... We one, did five of them twice. You could yes. Say. Yeah, basically. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ten of them once, you do three times three point three three. Anyway, the um, you've got an excuse for obtuse answers because you haven't slept for a bloody long time. No, no, no. I feel a bit jet lagged today. That's what it's more. So, but um, the uh, the the um, city to Hobart, I actually forgotten that when I was thinking. Yeah, that was a unique challenge in itself, and that sort of uh, um, again, it's another experience. You don't know how your body's going to react or how you're going to react in in a in a, uh, an environment which does have its inherent risks, but you've got to have confidence in the safety around you know, the systems in place. But things like, yeah, that was, it was 28 hours without a pee. And people say, how come you didn't have a pee? And, I, and the reason I didn't have a pee was I tried, I was there, and, but the waves are going up and down. And, and when you've got your, all your, I, you know, I'm not a sailor, right? So, but I remember I was at the stern trying to, do my business and um, it's pretty hard to hold your balance and uh, it just wasn't happening until we got becalmed in Storm Bay uh, near the finish. We all got becalmed and then the skipper said, look, we're going to be here for three hours according to the weather forecast, so you might as well all, I don't know, we'll just clean the deck and um, you take your kit off, all your wet weather kit off, and there's a lot of wet weather kit. We did all that and then I thought, well, maybe now's a good time to have another attempt and... I went to the stern and suddenly, oh, I was there for a little, my knees were my knees were dropping. And I remember one of the crew said, 
Oh, Rupert, we were wondering how long it was going to take you. Cause, and then I realised that they saw all these, these uh, hardened sailors was, had seen me sort of having attempts to have a pee. You know, it was like two years old that came out. It was pretty bad. <laughs> it was pretty bad. I don't think it was very good for my kidneys. <laughs> All right, well, well done. You survived another challenge. You got to Hobart those, that time. You managed to do a wee. You've yep. ridden around a track a hundred million times. Yep. And um, you're going to contemplate doing it again. I'm impressed. Thanks, Rob. It's always a pleasure to chat to you about these things. You get to the nitty gritty of me, don't you? Thanks Cheers, life. brother. Thanks, mate. <laughs> uh, yeah, I have forgotten about the city of